Hello and welcome to another Trekmate review. This week we're doing another TNG episode. We are doing Reunion, which is from Season 4 and it is Episode 7. This episode first aired on the 5th of November 1990. And uh, just before we get going, I'll, I'll just tell everyone a little bit of stuff about it. It was the 80th episode of TNG. It's uh, directed by Flaky Frakes. Uh, Jonathan Frakes. <laughs> um, it was the first episode written by Brannon Braga, who went on to do lots more with Trek. And it was also the first collaboration between uh, Brannon and Ronald D. Moore. Which obviously uh, went on from strength to strength. Yeah, yeah, definitely. As well from that point. So, um, do, do, do you want to tell people roughly what the episode's about? Well, uh, yeah, this episode is the f- very first introduction to Gowron. That's right, yeah. Um, this episode is uh, primarily... It's it's a Klingon episode, which is always, it's in my book, quite good fun. a full-on Klingon episode. It's got... it's Well, it, it's one episode. I, I'm sure there's way more out there, but it's one episode What has an A and a B story, but they're mm-hmm. intermingled, they're... You know, intertwined with each other. It's all Klingon. Yes, yes, no, definitely. And uh, to be honest, uh, it's it, I'll, I'll, I won't bury the lead. It's a pretty good episode. It is. It's... We we decided to watch this because um, on the normal pod this week we've done a um, character analysis of Galron. So we both said, you know, let's go back and do this for the YouTube review. Mm-hmm. But but we we uh, I think we just text each other, didn't we? And we both sort of simultaneously said the same thing. Like I've forgotten how damn good this episode is. It was one of those ones where you didn't think about it much before we you went to go back and watch it. It could have been years since we mm-hmm. both last watched it, but it, it's a really good episode. I know it we're is. supposed to say that at the end, but <laughs> yeah. And to be honest, it's one of those episodes that. Um... As we both uh, said privately to each other, um, we thought that Gowron was introduced much earlier on uh, to TNG. Not only did we think he was introduced much earlier on, we were both under the impression, because that's how he leaves it in your mind, that he was in a lot more episodes than he was in in TNG. And it was was only four four episodes. Yeah, only four. Which, to be honest, I, I still find quite shocking. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So um so this episode starts out with one second. I can tell you. Yeah, go on then. Uh we start off on the bridge of the Enterprise and the crew is hailed by Ambassador Kayla and she says it's an urgent matter. Uh Picard says to Worf, to a reluctant Worf, um You've got to go meet her. Yep. And well, yeah, I said reluctant wharf. He doesn't want to do it. He's he's making up excuses to Picard. Is it's one of those moments where Wharf comes across pretty funny, like a bit of a wimp mm-hmm. when he, he really shouldn't be. And wait now, I've got a I've got a quote here by um Picard. It might not be accurate. Uh Picard says, You are a member of this crew and you will not go into hiding whenever a Klingon vessel uncloaks. Well, that's, that's the thing because um, he felt that it, first of all, whenever Klingons arrived after the uh, House of Moog lost its honour, mm-hmm. um, he's kind of uh, well, he is an outsider of the uh, Empire now. He's looked upon as scum. Yeah. So, but also um, at that point, would uh, Picard? Uh, I'm trying to think. Was Kalo introduced uh, before this episode? Yes, she was. Yeah, she uh, was. Basically, she she'd come on board previously, and all all I can remember is that in that episode, if it was just one episode, she was teasing Worf a lot, and she was sort of trying to bed him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember them. Um, she was on the holodeck doing like a mm-hmm. battle program sort of thing, and he came in, and then I think they got all randy, and I think that's probably yes. when they uh, conceived. Alexander. Alexander. Okay, now does this episode instantly 
get marks down because it's the introduction of Alexander. No, I know <laughs> I know people out there hate him. But do you know what? I, I <laughs> think this Alexander in this episode, I, I think he's really cute. Yeah, no, totally. But to be honest, I'm surprised. Um, if we take that Alexander was conceived at that point when she first came onto the Enterprise... Alexander should only be a couple of years old. Well, I he think... He should be a baby, unless Klingons age quicker. Well, I was going to say, anyone who's not new to Trek, anyone who's watched a lot of TNG and DS9 will know that there's there's something wrong with Alexander. He's got some sort of speedy um, mutation going on there where he, he does grow older a lot quicker than everyone else because by the time you get to the end of DS9, he's like... He's like... 25 years old or something it doesn't make any sense yeah but they do it anyway yeah they do and it's a bit because i always just assumed that she because uh, that she had got up the duff before that episode and was being a bit of a sod and didn't tell wolf about the child until she needed to palm him off it's possible, yeah. Um, I'll just go back to to, to uh, the episode we're doing for a second. Just a couple of funny things. Mm-hmm. Well, just just one funny thing. Worf goes to the transporter room, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't I don't know if it's O'Brien in there or not. I can't remember, but whoever it is says uh, to two to beam aboard, mm-hmm. and Worf just sort of turns to them and goes two. You know, so yes. you kind of know where the story's going from that point already. Yes. Uh, and and it takes you know he like suspects it straight away what the deal is but it takes a little while for her to actually say it to him yeah because he doesn't want to actually uh, confront the situation no well he's wharf isn't he yeah he's a wharf let's face it he's, he he uh, can do the aggressive klingon bit but he's a bit of a pussy when it comes to <laughs> he's he's a pussy a lot of the time really isn't he wharf <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, I do. I, have you ever seen the uh, video compilation of the times that Worf gets shut down? No, <laughs> no, I don't think I have. I'll, I'll have to find it on YouTube and send you a link. It's like about twenty odd minutes of people telling Worf to, <laughs> like shut that. Up, then, Worf. yeah, <laughs> yeah, or Worf coming out with an extremely long proposal and then someone just going no. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find it. Yeah, 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 send me that. There's another funny bit what comes uh, straight after that. Um, When they're alone, I think they're alone. Alexander's not with them, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Um, um, What's her name? Kayla is, I think she's on one of the turbo lifts or something with Worf. Yeah. And she just says, uh, not even a bite on the cheek. (laughs) (laughs) Just more teasing of him. Yes, because that's the thing. Kayla, uh, obviously being half human, she's much more. Uh, she she she, even though she, um, I, you get the impression that she appreciates where she's come from. She does not like the Klingon way. Um, yeah, I think she's a good character. It's, it's a shame what happens to her happens to her. I don't want to. It's not really a spoiler, is it? But no, not twenty five, thirty years later, no. But it sort of is in in a way in this review because it happens in, in this, this review, episode. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not going to say it then for that reason. Um. Well, I'm thinking that. Uh, yeah, no, it does make her a really interesting character because she's almost like the. Uh, alpha version or, or like the beta version of Belana Torres. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, so you, you could share similarities because Belana always hated um her Klingon her side. Her Klingon so side. Yeah. Exactly. Well, they do they do a few things with that over the seven seasons of Voyager, don't they? But yeah, Kayla sort of she embraces both sides in a way, doesn't she, to an extent? But you know, when Worf is constantly spouting Klingon stuff to yeah. her, you know, she will she She's will put like, it to him. Keep, don't give me that Klingon rubbish. Yeah, I'm half human. Your parents or your step parents, whatever you want to call them, were human. You know. Yeah. And you're working on a human ship as well. You know, with like ninety five percent humans. Hmm. Um. 
uh, I'll, I'll I'll skip to the uh, the other tiny bit of the story here. Mm-hmm. Um, Picard has to go aboard the Klingon ship. She she basically tells him, Kalar tells him to go aboard the the ship, where he meets uh, Kempek. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yes, it was. Yeah, uh, and he's the what, what do you call it? The, the head of the Klingon, the Chancellor. Is it is it the Chancellor? We had this conversation the other day, didn't we? Um, yeah, he's the current Chancellor, and he tells Picard that um, he has been poisoned over many many months. Mm-hmm. Uh, through his blood wine or something like that. Um, and basically, he's asking Picard, it's your job to sort out who's the new Chancellor going to be out of these two contenders and also, at the same time, find out which one of them has murdered me. Yeah, because he's like, it's definitely one of these two guys, even though there are top candidates for going for the job. Yeah, so in other words, whichever one murdered me, you know, give the other one the job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So those two contenders are Gowron, our buddy, yep. and and Juras. Yeah, and it's 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 a good introduction to both of them because mm-hmm. um, Juras um, for for me just came across as a bit of a knob. Well, again, I don't. I don't know if we should have done other episodes before this because Duras has been in it before. He was partly, or he was mm-hmm. to blame for for Worf's dishonor, his public dishonor, or whatever. Yes, he was. It was basically Worf uh, taking the fall to try and ensure the um, the the honor of the council, wasn't it? Yeah, and he wanted to protect his brother as well. He wanted to separate himself from his brother, so it was just him that got dishonored. Yeah, but it was the was it just him, or was it the entire Moog family at that point, or did the the House of Moog only get dishonored? Um, That's what in I'm DS9? saying. I wish we'd gone back and done uh, that previous episode or those previous episodes related yeah, it, to this story, but, um, yeah, but well, somehow it's... Worf was dishonored, but his brother. Uh, Tony Todd, I forget his name, character's name. He wasn't for some reason. Mm-hmm. He somehow didn't get get lumped in with it. No. Um, and yeah, well, that's the thing. When uh, later on in the show, when Picard brings Worf in, it's an interesting scene. But we'll get there later. Um, and so- it sees our first introduction to Crazy Eyes Galron. Yeah, uh, Kempek tells um, Picard he needs to... Well, they say this all the bloody time, don't they? He needs to present, pre- prevent Klingon civil war because of mm-hmm. these two guys. Um, he he doesn't trust anyone, Kempek. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are we? And he trusts Picard to be able to actually um, negotiate the things because Picard at first is um, reluctant to... Um, uh, take on board the uh, responsibility of mediating yeah. uh, for who gets to be the new chancellor. But Kempek makes good point that this isn't a question of um, the Klingons not liking a human being involved. You are a uh, like a renowned mediator within the quadrant. Mm-hmm. Uh, people respect you, and they respect the job that you do. This is what you do, so do it. And plus, not only that, I'm about to die in about five minutes. So, <laughs> and and not only that, I've already sent a message to the council telling them that you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, he does say that. Yeah, <laughs> I wrote in my notes here, and, and I think you'd agree with this. Everything we've covered so far, that's ten minutes into the episode, and it I've is... just ri- I've just written down ten minutes. Awesome. Yeah, I like you're ten that... minutes into the episode, and and it, it's a good story. It's a great story. It is, and um, it, what I it, it just keeps you gripped at all uh, all the time. Uh, this episode, there isn't any real uh, downtime. There's no breathing time. The only breathing no. time that you do get is uh, between Kayla, Alexander, and Worf, uh, because like we get to see Alexander, um. Like a couple of times interacting with Worf and there's, interacting there's so with many the school ups and downs with them. Like I, I've I've got written down um, Worf and Alexander talking, and Worf made me laugh again. 
he is quote quote that I've got written down. He says, "A warrior does not ask so many questions." The yes. poor little Alexander is just asking, like, "Why is this happening? Why are you saying that?" He's doing the usual kid thing of why, why, yeah. why. All his questions were fairly valid, though. I've not written them down, but you know, yeah. Worf's just being Worf. Shut up. Yes, we're Klingons. You do as I say. Yeah. So, um, uh, we've got the, uh, the 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 initial ceremony next, which is where we literally see Gowron first, and I've written down with lots of exclamation marks, crazy eyes. Yeah. Because he really is doing the crazy eyes full on, which I think is what he was talking about when we saw him the other week and saying yeah. that Frakes was telling him to do that, and he is doing it full on. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, proper full on bug eyes going on. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest he's ever done him. Um, mm-hmm. But it doesn't get very far, the ceremony, before there's an explosion. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's the thing. Um, it was uh, interesting because they were going through the ceremony, um, the, the Sonchi ceremony, and they were uh, performing it, and then suddenly there's an explosion. And mm-hmm. it seems to come from the back left of... Uh, I assume it, it, no, it wouldn't have been the bridge. It would have been whatever quarters on uh, the Klingon ship, and at that point, obviously, then uh, it made one of Kem- uh, one of Jurassic's guys die, and one of Galron's guys die. Yeah, I was kind of confused about that. I know, I know they said two two mm-hmm. Klingons had died at first, but it wasn't until later, I think, that they actually say that it's one of each. Yeah. Yeah, so either way, uh, two guys died. And then later on, uh, obviously the Enterprise uh, looks into the situation, as they always do. Yeah. Um, And Worf finds that uh, the triggering device uh, was actually Romulan made. That's right. And we had already uh, seen in previous episodes how deceptive the Juras family were and that they had ties with the Romulans. Mm. So already you've got a good idea of who's going to be uh, behind the actual uh, events. Though uh, when when they're questioning uh, the guys later, when they're questioning Gowron and Juras later, I find it so interesting because... Uh, obviously, they introduce Worf. They both lose their shit that Worf's there. Yeah. At which point Picard says, look... Try and get this scumbag out of here or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And Picard pretty much says, like, no, screw you not. He's my chief of security. That This yeah, is his he's job. he's Starfleet. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you think of him. He is my guy. Yeah. And you've got to respect that. Yeah, and he's right, and, right, right to do that in that situation. And I think also uh, Picard wanted to antagonise them both as well to see how they would react. Yeah, he's testing them. He's also wanting to stretch it out. So he meets with uh, Kayla and um, asks, how can I stretch this out? And he basically works out that if we do it the old way, Mm -hmm. uh, if we do uh, Zsa Zsok, the old tradition, Mm -hmm. So he knows that that's going to stretch it out, uh, but they but those two guys can't argue with it anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, bef- before they get to that, though, there's also another scene where Gowron is in the same room with Kalar, and he tries to bribe her basically to uh, to help him out, you know, to lean mm-hmm. towards him. But it's kind of pointless. He doesn't really need to do that because everything's going in his favor anyway. It is, but also I think at that point they're just trying to... Because even though you don't trust um, Juras, at this point Gowron just seems that little bit unhinged that even though you know the outcome, um, you still think, could it be Gowron? Well, yeah, I I don't know if I said this to you on the pod the other day. I think I did, but I think the first time I ever saw this episode, like Gowron does look that crazy... But mm-hmm. you wonder, is this smart writing? As it and is it going to turn out that Gowron is actually setting up uh, Juras? Mm-hmm. But um, but you know, Worf throughout the episode just keeps saying it's Juras, it's Juras, it's Juras, and you know, 
obviously mm-hmm. it is you know when you watch it back you can see it is but at the time you know, well i still do it today i always question is this smart long-term writing you know is it uh, are they trying to mm-hmm. you know get gowron to set the guy up but you know that what that wasn't the case but gowron yeah. just likes to he likes to be safe doesn't he like mm-hmm. even though he can be honorable like if he's got to do it the dodgy way he'll he'll do it that way too yeah but Kalar's not interested any anyway in anything he's got to offer. Not at all. Because that's the thing, when Picard initially, like, it was a by the time announced that he was going with the old rules, like, Kalar was the one. Even though Gowron was surprised that uh, Picard had gone with uh, using the old tradition, Kalar was the one that was most frustrated because he wanted over it over and done with as quickly as mm-hmm. possible. Which is probably half to do with no thorough investigation into the deaths and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so uh, another little part of the B story, I guess. Well, mm-hmm. so this, you know, th- there is no real B story with this, but mm-hmm. uh, Kayla asks Picard and he doesn't help. So she digs through uh, the Enterprise's records to find out the truth about Juras and Worf and how Worf was actually dishonored and. Mm-hmm what the story is with that. So she pretty much finds that out. Yeah, because Worf doesn't want to discuss it with her. Yeah, Worf, and Picard uh, refuses to as well. Yeah, uh, so she takes it upon herself to uh, find out by uh, pretty much going into the day spaces. She first of all re- uh, listens through the um, logs on the starship, though she doesn't have access to personal logs. So she listens through all of the official logs and then gets access to the council's logs. Uh, yeah, that's right. On the event as well. Because obviously her being the ambassador, she has certain privileges uh, with regards uh, to that. Um, at which point she does uh, figure out what Worf had done yeah. to cover it up. Because then at that point... Um, Duras gets information from uh, the homeworld that uh, Kalar had been uh, right. tapping into the uh, information network and getting access to uh, the logs. So he had uh, he knew that she was on to him. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so then, minutes after that, it literally cuts to Worf and Alexander walking in on Kalar, half dead. Mm-hmm. on the ground and um, what does she say to him? It was Duras. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I, I'm sure she says something like about Alexander look after him but I can't remember what she says yeah. now. Yeah, she does tell him to uh, look after Alexander and uh, look. Oh, I can't remember word for word what was said. And Worf, um, you know, tells Alexander, you know, like he's been doing all episodes, like, oh, look at this, this is death, you've got to take this in, you can't turn away. Uh, to be fair to the little guy, he doesn't cry or anything. No. He he does take it in. Uh, but then Worf leaves Alexander with Crusher, I think, with Dr. Crusher, he just mm-hmm. runs off, and then it kicks off, and he uh, grabs his batleth, chucks his badge, in his bedroom, in his quarters or whatever, uh, yep. goes and kicks Juraf's ass. And, and stabs a bat left straight through his chest. Yeah, no Just problem. After... Doesn't hesitate at all. Yeah, because uh, Worf had beamed onto the ship and um, declared that he wanted vengeance, uh, at which point uh, they weren't going to allow him to fight Juras. But then when the guy, uh, when Juras's men... Um, when Worf tells him that he was uh, the mate of Kayla. Yeah, that's right. That is when they're like, oh, shit's just got real. Yeah. <laughs> they allow, uh, I can never remember the name of it, but basically the bite, uh, the battle for vengeance. Fight. So <laughs> that's it. So that's when they kick off. And as we said, that's, as you said, then berries the bat left into his chest. Yeah. Um, just, just as Riker, had, Riker and Data had burst in and Riker was telling Worf to stop, Worf did not stop. There was no, no he, stopping Worf. He acted like he, they weren't even there at all, didn't he? Yeah. And I can't blame him. No, I no, I him. can't blame him at all. And, you know, he, uh, 
just after this, Picard reprimands him, tells him off. But Worf, you know, says to him, like the Klingon way, he says, that's okay. What I did, you know, I've, I've not technically done anything wrong there. Yeah, which Picard then firmly says, yes, you may not have done anything wrong with the Klingon way, but you are on yeah. a Starfleet ship and you are expected to behave as a Starfleet officer. Yeah. So um, he also does say, which, uh, you know, will continue in further episodes, you know, you need to get the truth out about all this stuff. Mm-hmm. With you being dishonoured, you you need to go to the Klingon Council and, and sort this out in the future. Which Worf says, not now, but soon, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. And that pretty much rounds up the episode. Other than um, another scene with Alexander and Worf. Yeah, where Worf literally says the Darth Vader line, "I am your father." Yeah, he actually says that. Yeah, and that's pretty much it, as you say. So yeah, no. So all in all, it's jam packed. It's a jam packed episode. It's got it's got everything in there. They get a lot into the episode. There isn't a dull moment. It goes from strength to strength. Yeah, throughout. And to be honest, it's uh, it is what it is. One of the strongest episodes is it's up there i would say i would say it's definitely up there in the 10 percent, the top 10 percent episodes i reckon mm-hmm. because yeah. yeah that's fair it does a lot of character building introduces gowron yeah uh, builds more on the m- mythos and like honor and everything of the klingons yeah um introduces alexander whether that's a good thing or a bad thing yeah it ticks all the boxes for me personally. Yeah, same mate. Yeah, very impressed with this episode. I, I was very happily surprised to go back and watch this and go, "Wow, that was great." Uh, you know, I was saying that ten minutes in, so you know, forty-five minutes, brilliant. It was, it definitely was one of them episodes where you can recognise early on that it's going to be a good episode. Yes. So definitely, if you haven't watched this, you've done yourself a disservice, and you need to. Uh, go back and watch this episode if for some reason it's slipping your mind. And what I keep saying all the time, there's so much Trek out there that it's so easy to forget like how good certain episodes were. And when you go back and revisit them, it's it's a pleasant reminder how great Star Trek can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. A good reminder of exactly why we do love this franchise. Yeah. Definitely. So... Let us know what your favourite parts of this episode were in the comments below, uh, or you can email us at trekmate1701 at gmail.com, tweet us at trekmate1701, or head on over to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash trek.mate.1. And remember, as well as commenting, if you could give us a like, favourite, and subscribe to the channel, it is most, most appreciated. Definitely. So... Thanks for watching, guys. I've been Wayne Emery. I've been Jude Hawkins, and this has been a Trekmate Review.